Warning, this video is not for the faint of heart. Viewer discretion is advised. The Deep Web, a hub for the most depraved individuals and those with a much darker taste to life. Please welcome me in joining Mr. Davis as we try to navigate through the deep web. So like every other edgy, bored teenager during the peak years of internet freedom, I got myself into some stuff I had no business poking around in. People talk about the glory days when internet anonymity was real and you could do all kinds of illegal things, but those people are full of shit. Anonymity online or otherwise is a fucking joke. I learned that the hard way the summer I graduated from high school. I was held back in the third grade after a really serious illness kept me hospitalized for almost six months, so my friends graduated the year before me. My senior year sucked. I was alone and it was too late to make new friends, so I skipped a lot of classes and spent most of my time online playing games and talking to my friends through AIM. It was actually a really dark period in my life that I try not to think too much about, and because I haven't ever tried to repeat my deep web exploration, I forgot about a lot of the stuff I did. I do remember though, that it was my friend Brian who got me into the deep web exploration. We were all obsessed with 4chan, B specifically, and an Anon who had taught him how to use Tor safely. He'd been mentioning it for a while and I got curious. I asked him about it and he made it sound like it was a utopia for people like us, who were tech savvy and, well, nerdy. You could find anything, he said. Any porn you could imagine was yours for the viewing. There were sites offering drugs which you could purchase and have delivered anywhere into the world. He had been a part of a few raids too and I admit, it all sounded like a lot of fun. So I downloaded Tor and he taught me how to access the hidden wiki and some other neat sites. It ended up taking over my life. It was like being a kid in a candy store. Suddenly I had access to unlimited movies, games, porn, information of any kind. I stayed away from the really nasty sites like Violent Desires and anything that had even the slightest hint of containing child porn. Of course it's impossible to avoid that kind of thing down here so I saw a fair share. If I'm being honest it never bothered me much. Neither did all the very graphic gore. I'm not ill-adjusted or anything, but I've never liked kids that much, and I'd long since been desensitized by gore. I made it a point to report what I could and move on, but it never stuck with me. After the school year ended, I had three months to pass before going to college, and I basically became a shut-in. I spent almost all my time hopping from site to site, seeing what was down there. Most of it was just back doors to existing sites, but it was still fun to fuck around with things and be a general asshole. I still talked to my friends and they moved on to WoW and Brian in particular spent less time on the deep web than I did. However, one evening he messaged me and told me he found a way to view sites based on location. I have no idea how he did this and if he told me I quickly forgot. I assume it was some kind of script, but maybe that's not right. Either way, he showed me how to use it and I started poking around sites that were registered in my state. Most weren't anywhere close to me, so I was just opening tabs, browsing quickly, and moving on. Eventually, I came across a site that was registered to someone about two hours from me, and I opened the page. Whoever had created the site didn't know much about design. The layout was wonky and incredibly ugly, and it took me a while to figure out how to navigate around. The links were the same color as the background which was just a black screen with the words number one devotee repeated over and over and highlighting had been disabled so I had to tab to find any of the links. One took me to a chat that was very active with people posting every couple seconds. The usernames were all generic male names like Brad or Tim and they were all talking about someone they called perfection. It was really bizarre. I read the chat for a while and literally all anyone talked about was how amazing perfection was and how they admired everything he did. I wondered if I'd come across some kind of weird community that idolized a celebrity. It made me laugh a little, so I kept poking around while keeping the chat open in a separate window. One link led to a bunch of sound clips that were about 30 seconds in length. After listening to a few, I realized they were all just random sounds. A car door shutting, a toilet flushing the sound of a man clearing his throat, 
typing. One was of terrible quality, but I could make out a baby fussing. Holy shit, these people were really dedicated. I imagined one of the members creeping up the house of whoever it was they were obsessed with and recording any sound they could and bring it back to their community like a treasure. I tried to figure out who Perfection was, but it was strange. His real name was never mentioned anywhere I looked. Another link took me to some kind of digital archive that contained downloads. Warily, I clicked one of them and downloaded it. I opened up a document that was almost 500 pages long, and it seemed to be some kind of novel about growing up with Perfection. I only skimmed through it, but the general gist seemed to be that Perfection and the narrator were obsessed with each other. It read like any old awful fanfiction. I closed it out and downloaded another file. This one contained what looked like hand-drawn blueprints for a house with the rooms labeled to things like our studio, second kitchen for quarantined food. The latter struck me because I'm a celiac and I know all about quarantining food. Whoever it was, they had some kind of allergy too. Other documents contained inventories of strange items like Q-tips, clean and dirty, fruit rinds, cups, bits of fabric, and used tissues. I was starting to get really skeeved out. Whoever these people were, they took their obsession a little too seriously for my taste. There was even a forum dedicated to perfection which had thousands of threads and even more replies all having to do with this person. It was overwhelming in a way. As I opened another link which led me to a gallery of photos, I checked the chat and found to my surprise that it had stopped completely. No new messages had been posted in at least five minutes and I felt a pang of paranoia. Did they know I was here? Would they be angry? I typed a quick, hello, just browsing, don't mind me in the chat box, and went back to the gallery. A little ding signaled a reply but I ignored it and waited for the first image to load. It was a very grainy shot of a woman with a baby. They were exiting the hospital, the woman in a wheelchair. She looked down into the baby's face as the nurse pushed her toward the curb. The woman was familiar, but I couldn't place her, and the photo was of such poor quality that it was impossible to make out any defining features. The next photo showed the same woman and child playing in their living room. The baby was on its back, reaching up toward a hanging toy. Every photo I opened was of the woman and baby, but I noticed that as the series went on, the baby began to age, and the woman was featured less and less. And some of the photos were incredibly strange. Some were zoomed in on the item the child was holding, almost to the point of being completely out of focus. Others were of footprints or broken branches. One of a used potty chair, almost like the one I'd had when I was a kid that had been taken outside into the lawn. Whoever was taking the photo was holding a piece of stool in their hand. This is when I really got unnerved. Clearly the community that ran this site was obsessed to the point of madness about this person, perfection and suddenly I didn't want to be a part of it anymore. I closed the window and the chat pinged again. This time I checked it. Are you proud of this world? The message was from a user named Steve. I frowned and typed back. What? You must be so proud. What do you think? I had no idea what to say. I hesitated. They typed another message. It's okay. Don't be shy. My house is your house. Look around. It sure is something. You guys are really obsessed with this guy. There was a brief pause. Who is he anyway? Another user replied this time, someone named Bob. He is perfection. He is God. I live my life to serve him so that one day he may grace me with his approval. This world is far too filthy for him. I must continue to create our utopia. These people were fucking crazy. Clearly, I stumbled onto some kind of community of super fans and I felt a little angry. How do you know he even wants you guys to do this? This is a pretty huge invasion of privacy. Someone else replied, Terry. We are in love. Those who keep us apart will be destroyed. I typed faster. He doesn't even know who any of you are, you fucking idiots. Get a grip. The whole self-insert thing is cringy enough, but this is all so fucking over the top. Steve replied again. What have I done to upset you? Nothing. I just think it's fucking weird that a bunch of random people have been apparently spying on someone and stealing their photos and stuff. There's only room for the two of us. The message caught me off guard, but before I could reply, every user I'd been talking to replied simultaneously. 
Are you proud of me? I felt a weird wriggling in my gut. Something was wrong. Does this house suit your needs? Perfection? I started to type back, but it was like someone struck the back of my head with a hammer. My heart was hammering as I reopened the gallery of photos. The hospital photo was grainy, but suddenly the woman came into focus and I made a choked sound of alarm. I scrolled to the bottom of the gallery and opened the newest photo which had been posted only an hour before. It was of a closed door in a hallway, light seeping under the door and illuminating the walls just enough to see my framed Batman poster and the distinctive paint smear above the doorknob where I brushed a wet paint roller by mistake a year before. I frantically poured over the item catalog and found the listing for the rent sweatshirt I'd lost as a toddler. I found the stuffed toys I'd thrown out or donated over the years, the condoms I'd flushed down the toilet in ninth grade, 20 pounds of feces taken from our septic tank and contained in a large plastic drum. I found my 8th grade report card and my valentine I'd thrown in the gutter the same year out of crippling anxiety. The chat pinged again. I love you more than you will ever know. You are my perfection. I sat numbly as messages began spamming the chat all from different users. I love you. I love you. You are God. I'll never leave you. Perfection. Perfection. Love you. My Lord and Savior, never leave you. I ripped the power cord out of the wall and flew out of my chair. I closed every curtain in the house and locked every door. I opened every cupboard in the closet and looked under every piece of furniture until I was sure I was alone and then I curled up under a blanket in the farthest darkest corner of my closet and went out to sleep for some kind of shock response. When I woke up, I took my computer apart and buried it in the woods behind my house. I told my parents that it suffered a fatal short circuit and had caught fire. They brought me a new laptop but I could only bring myself to use it when the internet was disabled. I never found out who devotee was. I developed agoraphobia and I rarely left my apartment. It's been almost five years, but I still take my trash to the dump and have it incinerated. When I do go out in public, I wear large hats and sunglasses. I do everything I can to blend in and stay under the radar. My computer was unearthed and taken from its grave, but I'm not sure when. I hope I never find out. And I still panic whenever things go missing around the house. I see a lot of people interested in the deep web these days, mainly teens, people talking about red doors and maybe other alternative names to things that they think they're real, but have never seen themselves. People question this every day and ask, are these red door events real? Do they really happen? They are very real indeed. Unfortunately, people with sick minds who get off on torture and other abnormal things go searching for these red doors slash red rooms, and when they find them, they dish out great amounts of money just to control the show. I'm going to tell you about the experience I had when I was going onto the deeper end of the web. Some of you may have heard it already but you can't actually access it without Tor. Now Tor is infested with law enforcement. Red doors won't show up on the onion any more than they used to. The only way that you can get to see a red door show is through the shadow web. And to get to the shadow web, you need an anonymous server which is called a Skix. It's like the new Tor, but without the law enforcement. The world is a much more cruel place nowadays in the cyber world. As a recently retired FBI agent who specialized in cyber crimes all around the world, I am here to share a story of what I saw on one of my last cases before I retired. The case was never closed and got passed to the agent who replaced me. This was four months ago. I was working on a case that had been opened up through an anonymous complaint we had received online. The complaint was lengthy and in great detail described and mentioned many acts of torture beyond of what I had seen in my time in the agency. 
The tipster had sent screenshots of what they saw one night whilst digging deep onto the deep web. They explained how they had been irregular on the deep web, but that everything was dying out due to the LE that they wanted. So they needed to dig deeper, and they found the shadow web. The process of becoming a member of the shadow web was lengthy. The person claimed that it took them up to two weeks before they were granted access after paying. Finally though, the email they were expecting came in and they were granted access after installing Skix. This was the new software that would allow them access to the shadow web servers. Little did they know what they were getting themselves into though. I can't give you too many details though as the person who sent the information was murdered in their home a few weeks later. But this is where I will mention my experience as part of a personal investigation. I was given a link to the shadow web by the recently deceased, with permission from my boss. I was able to sit down and proceed and took the security precautions and paid the fee. It took the shadow web admin two days to send the email allowing me access. In the email, they prompted me to join as many as four live sessions that were going on throughout the week. One of them was called Sharkbait, another one was called Shit Serial, and the other two are too gross to mention. The shadow web entrance that I was given was a portal to about ten other websites through the shadow web. The websites didn't have names. They were named by numbers in a 1 to 10 list. And there were about a 100 other websites on the bottom. But mainly, they were all under construction. On the main page, it showed the times, the dates, and the four shows that they were going to be broadcasting live on the shadow web through a stream. They were archives that began on March the 4th, 2015, and ended on August 23rd. These archives were of previous live streams that had already happened. I decided to take a look. The one that I chose was called Salted Snail. I didn't really know what to expect before clicking it. Judging by the name, I thought there had to be a snail involved. There wasn't. I clicked the link. It took me to a brown page with an advert and a video behind the ad. The advert started with a clown laughing. Then he says, Not so fast. You have to go through me before you want to see what's to come. He reminded me of Captain Spaulding. He had several heads in the background, and his face was painted and smeared. His clothes were splattered with bloodstains. In the ad, he encouraged viewers to join one of the next sessions, to pay the fee, and to see the fun unfold, and that they were in full control of what happened to the sadistic victims. He then looked closely at the camera and said, It's going to be one hell of a show. And the advert ended. The video was now available to play, and it was titled, Salted Snail. It began with no credits. You see the clown again walking out from behind a white curtain that appeared to have either fecal matter or old blood smeared all over it, with a light behind. His face appears and is painted. He is naked, and walks out of the curtain chuckling to himself and smiling. He then says the show is scheduled to stream for 15 minutes. So he has to stick to schedule because he is very, very hungry and has not eaten in the past two days. He then flashes his ribs at the camera. He wasn't that skinny. And then he asks everyone watching if they're ready for the show. He then chuckles and says, I'll be right back. He goes behind the curtain and rolls out a black barrel and places it in front of the camera. He then walks around the barrel, knocking all around it with his fist as if he's knocking on a door, and then kicks it hard with his heel. 
you hear something in the barrel. And then he grabs what seems like a flat-headed screwdriver and pries open the barrel. You see a head full of hair as the lid opens. A girl sitting there alive. He then yells at her in Chinese to stand up. She can barely stand. Her body is so soggy. From what I assume is the effect of being in that barrel for days. He looks at the camera and says, Doesn't she look delicious? Delicious as cake. The girl had her hands tied up behind her mouth and was bound with multiple layers of cloth. She looked too weak to scream, too weak to escape or even attempt. She just stood there for what seemed to be as if she were accepting her own death. Then the clown went behind the curtain and came back with a knife and a razor. He then got in front of the camera and said, I love me Chinese food. It's dinner time. The girl then turned to him and looked at him as he nodded at her and said, Oh yes, it's time. Her eyes opened wide. She tried to scream, but she couldn't. He then teased her, poking at her with a knife. She began to bleed instantly from the poking as she was extremely soggy. He then showed off the little razor blade and proceeded to cut little squares on her shoulder as if he were cutting a little piece of cake. Pretty soon, he was at the other shoulder, then her chest, breast and stomach. The scene was extremely gorish and violent almost as if filleting a fish. By the time he was finished with the body, he had a plate filled with her skin and tissue, what seemed to be a plate full of soggy skin. But the girl was still alive. Her body looked like it had been eaten by piranhas. The only thing that remained were her breasts and her face and hair. Then he took the plate behind the curtain and brought back another plate. He then looks at the camera and says, Well, look at that. Doesn't she look great? You can see that she may have lost a couple of pounds, huh? He then winks at the camera and begins to laugh, and proceeds to slice off the girl's ears and lips. What looks now like a mutilated body that is still alive left me wondering what he had done to other people in the past. I was enraged and extremely disturbed by what I had seen. The finale showed the clown coming out of the curtain with two containers of salt. He then poured the salt off over her body where her skin had been cut off. He poured a good amount on her ears and lips too. The girl suffering, hardly moving, but still somewhat standing. He then looks at the camera and says, I bet you thought I was going to kill her, didn't you? But I'm not a murderer. He then pushes her head back down into the barrel and closes the lid. He looks at the camera and says, Stay tuned to the next episode. The camera then shows him putting a white tablecloth over the barrel and placing the plate full of soggy flesh on it. He lights a candle, grabs a knife and fork and starts eating the flesh whilst chuckling away at himself. The screen then floods with the words till the next episode over and over with some circus music playing in the back. The camera then dims, and it shows him there, eating and laughing away. The black screen shows the word, offline. I immediately became concerned for the girl. She was Asian. The clown clearly looked American, or sounded American at least. 
He really resembled Captain Spaulding from The Devil's Rejects or House of a Thousand Corpses. I am assuming that is what he was trying to act like anyway. I contacted my chief and had a personal meeting with him and explained everything that I had seen. He then laughed and said, oh, you've seen him too, eh? That clown on the internet. He's been around since the late 90s doing these shows. He seems to buy women off the black market and then torture the shit out of them. He then shrugs his shoulders and says, We don't know who he is or where he's located. The Chinese help keep him anonymous, probably because he buys their stock. To me, this was something new. As an agent who dealt with homicides and piracy, I had never encountered nor seen anything like this. I am now retired, and I thought I would share this story with you. Everyone should know, the deep web is deep and free, but the shadow web, that is somewhere that you do not want to go to. Beware. I've been watching a YouTube series about deep web exploration. I won't name the series or the channel it belongs to. I'm not getting paid for advertisements. Anyway, I looked up a video on how to access said deep web. I did it fast and dirty. Not much research on what not to do. Big mistake, let me tell you right now. Using Windows on the deep web is a bad idea. That much I did know. Easy to get hacked that way since it's the most prominent OS. I know you can boot up on a live USB on a Linux clone OS or a simple Google search can tell you how to do that. It's not as difficult as it sounds. But I figured if my laptop gets hacked, I'm screwed. I can't exactly afford to just buy a new one right now, so I thought I'd be smart and use my Android tablet. What a genius, right? Yeah, I know, I'm an idiot. A few VPN or virtual private network apps later and I'm surfing the deep web looking around like a little kid for an adult store. I have no clue what any of it means but I'm interested in it all. I'm aware you can find a lot of snuff and pedo rings so I treaded carefully. Unfortunately I stumbled upon one of the two. I'm not going to say which. It made me sick to my stomach and I nearly quit then and there. In fact I did for a few minutes. I chalked up the bad luck and resolved to be more careful. I'm not into that shit, not by a long shot. I'm not some deviant with fetishes for snuff or kids. That image will probably be burned into my brain for the rest of my miserable life. Anyway, I'm browsing for a few hours. It's after 3am. I've heard it's better to use the deep web at night, less traffic that way. I found a few interesting sites. There's tons of religious stuff on there. You'd be surprised how often you find Satanists, or at least people who claim to be Satanists. Most of the time it's likely to be some edgy teenagers rebelling against their religious families. I won't get into my religious views, don't worry. It even has several of its own social networks and email services. No thank you. You're begging to be stalked by some creep if you use one of those. Or better yet, get scammed by a catfish or honeypot. There are loads of conspiracy blogs as well, both interesting and hilarious. Everything from Justin Bieber is secretly a reptilian member of the Illuminati to leaked files on human experimentation. There was even a guy who claimed to have had stumbled across the interdimensional travel via falling into an actual rabbit hole, as in a literal physical hole in the ground made up by a fuzzy rabbit. I'd say you can't make this stuff up, but clearly you can. I was serious about the human experimentation, by the way. You're going to want to avoid that kind of stuff. If you had any faith in humanity, you'd lost it in a heartbeat. Sweet holy hobgoblins, I hope that stuff wasn't legit. I mean, dear God. Gun shops, drug jobs, celebrity nudes, pirated movies, hackers for hire, hitmen, virus programmers, script kiddies, Stolen credit cards, you name it. There was one site that sold stolen U.S. currency that was supposed to be marked for shredding due to age or poor condition. Seems like they got a lot of business, too. No wonder the economy is in the toilet. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of legitimate stuff on there, too. 
I visited the site of a really smart dude who was creating his own custom OS. He even had games and stuff on it. Funny things too. A mock cult made for people named Dan was among my favorites. The people that weren't maniacs seemed to be open-minded if a little paranoid. Then I came across a site that supposedly gives you access to the webcams of people's personal laptops. I'm curious. I shouldn't have been, I know. I'm not expecting to see some cam girls here, just some slack-jawed ding-dongs staring blankly at their screens watching let's plays or some shit. And that's exactly what I saw. Neckbeards, teenagers, old men looking confused, the works. Here's me, laughing at unexpected people. And then I saw myself. Ha ha, I thought sarcastically. It's tapping into my camera and trying to give me a good scare. It almost did at first. Even so, I logged off. I kind of realized how bad what I was doing was. Not to mention how illegal it was. I went back to the clear web and watched some Netflix. Soon enough, I'd forgotten all about my deep web exploits. Then my Skype starts ringing. Another Skype number is calling me. I think maybe it's one of my friends trying it out. I've been pestering one of them for a while to get on Skype so we can chat while playing games on Steam, so I pick it up. At first there was silence, and then I heard a voice. A man's voice, and he sounded like he was an older guy, 50 plus. Looking good, he said. Without a second's hesitation, I hung up, deleted every deep web-related app on my tablet, shut down, and restarted my router. I have no freaking clue how that guy got my Skype number, and to be quite honest, I don't want to know how. All I know is that if you're going to use the deep web, I beg of you, for your own safety, do more research than I did. Talk to someone who has experience in setting up a proper VPN or some other kind of anonymity. You're sure as hell not going to find it on freaking Google Play. I am being watched. Everywhere I look, there was a red light pointing at me. This has been happening for years. But I've actually seen them now. The men with the blue hoodies. This all started to happen when I was seven years old. Back then... My family was in a sort of financial situation, as my mum had to leave her job because they weren't giving her any hours. My mother and my two older brothers and I lived in this sweet little motor lodge with a community pool, as well as cable TV that meant we got all the kids' channels. We had two rooms, which we kept nice and tidy since we called it home. Every day, my brothers and I would chill at the pool, mess around and keep doing what kids do. But then one day, everything changed. I had run out to go into the pool before my brothers got dressed, and so I was in the pool swimming alone. There were two very fine looking women, just sunbathing on the side of the pool. I hadn't recognized them from anywhere before, but I paid no notice to them. The ladies soon joined me in the pool and struck up a conversation with me. Only one of them spoke. We'll call her Lily as I never found out her real name. Lily asked how old I was and I proudly told her that I was seven and a half. The two ladies giggled and then Lily asked me a slew of questions most of which I don't remember now, except for Did I like having my picture taken? I thought about it for a bit and told them that I loved being in the spotlight. Well, your picture is going to be seen by hundreds of people, she said. Say cheese. I smiled and the flash of the camera blinded me for what seemed like a minute or so. And when I opened my eyes, the ladies were gone. I rubbed my eyes for a little and my brothers jumped into the pool. They asked if I was okay, and to not run into the pool like that without them. Ever since that event, I've always felt as if I were being watched. Definitely not by the same people, but I didn't pay it much mind. 
it was just ordinary things. When I was walking down the streets, I'd look over and I'd feel like these people were watching me. For a long time, I just thought it was paranoia and I was deluding myself. People always stare at other people. I mean, it's just something people do. However, this all changed lately. As I got older, my brothers taught me about the secret internet, i.e. the deep web. I'd been exploring on it for months, and it was just an ordinary day of randomly clicking through links on the hidden wiki, trying to find something interesting, but not too interesting. I came across this site called Candy Candy, and it read, If you want to find any little boy, you've come to the right place. We have a variety to choose from. Fat, skinny, tall, short, infant, you name it. You want it? We got it. I was initially creeped out and decided to close my browser until a pop-up showed up saying, Are you sure you want to leave? Hmm, I didn't really want to leave. So I scrolled down a little bit more. But I wish that I hadn't. I saw pictures of chained up and brutally abused boys under the age of 10, each having the tag taken. My mind told myself to leave and forget what happened, but I was fascinated. I kept scrolling down, cringing at the pictures, until I saw myself. There was a picture on the website of me at the pool. It was from years ago. But it was there. I looked at the tag of the picture and it said, For Sale. I clicked the picture and a summary popped up saying, Aged around 13 years old. Black hair, hazel eyes, loves company. After I saw this horrifying description, I shut off my computer and tried to forget it. But I could never forget it. Every once in a while, I'd log back in and check, and it would always say for sale. I'm 15 now and went on the website again. I immediately scrolled down to my picture, which was now a recent picture of me at the OBX beach in North Carolina. The tag now said, Sold. I hired a guy to hack into my ex-wife's Gmail account. Feel free to judge me all you want. Of course, it's against the law. Of course, it's a violation of her privacy. Why else would I be using a throwaway account? But there were some emails I sent to her while we were still together. Things we promised to keep between the two of us. They didn't involve any illegal activity. Having said that, the subject matter was very personal. And given how ugly and nasty the divorce had been going, I have no idea what she might do with the messages. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. I was determined to find a way into her account to get rid of every message she could use to publicly shame me. I didn't know the first thing about hacking, but I knew you could hire people to do it for you. Obviously, these guys didn't advertise on the yellow pages. But as I soon found out, they're easy to find as long as you're willing to venture into the deep web. I had downloaded a Tor browser a few months prior, but every time I thought about using it, I chickened out. But that was for good reasons. I'd heard that in the deep web you might have fine child pornography pop up on your browser, even when you're not looking for it. Well, last night I got pretty drunk and said fuck it. Rather than a deluge of child porn. Turns out it's organized pretty well, for what is basically an underground internet crime syndicate. I saw links to sites where you could buy drugs, download snuff films, and even hire assassins. Eventually I found what I was looking for, a message board called Hackers for Hire. I made a post outlining the details of what I wanted done. I got a surprisingly quick reply from a guy named X. Yep, that's his whole username, just X. All he said was that he'd get in touch with me tomorrow. This morning I woke up with a brutal hangover, an immediate sense of regret for what I'd done last night, and a new message in my Reddit inbox. It was a message from X himself. 
I had no idea why a hacker would PM somebody on Reddit, unless he was hiding behind like seven proxies. But I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. For all I know, that isn't even possible. Here's a screenshot of it. Right away I knew something was up because his username was... Well, just check the screenshot. It's one fucking letter. Reddit has never allowed one letter usernames. Believe it or not, the link in his PM is a link to this sub. Specifically the thread for this week's top rated post. I'm guessing many of you have read it. It's called, Love Seeing You Last Week. Thank you for fixing my computer. Every other post on here looks normal, but the one he linked me to is glitchy. The text keeps changing, but it happens so fast that I can't figure out what he's trying to say. Maybe it's the address for a meetup? Well, that was the first thought that came to mind. But it only took me a moment to realize how dumb it was. Most likely this guy is in China or Romania or who the fuck knows where. I noticed the screen changes weren't random. It was like the same pattern on loop. So I took a screen recording. Here it is. I would greatly appreciate it if one of you guys could tell me what it means, if anything. I understand if you're repulsed by him even asking, given what I did yesterday. He tried to run. Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. And congratulations for making it through the video. Some of those stories were really twisted. I want to thank Mr. Davis for helping me out with these stories. If you enjoyed his portion of the video, be sure to show him some love and subscribe to his awesome channel. I'm actually planning on releasing another deep web video soon, as I have more great stories to share. But you guys need to let me know in the comments if you're still hungry for more, as I know a lot of you enjoy them. So come on guys, get commenting. If you enjoyed the video, remember to smash that like button and subscribe, as you won't want to miss what's next. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want some behind the scenes action. But for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.